I think a lot of times, um, because our society is sort of trapped uh, in this um, this complicated and clear stuff, that when we when we actually go in to do complex work like we're doing here, um, and actually what I just heard in the softgov call, for example, is all about what governing constraints can we put on here as opposed to enabling constraints. And I think what a lot of times the role of the artist is to do is to say, hey, you know, um, I'm giving you a way back. So governing constraint only goes in the direction of this arrow, whereas an enabling constraint creates a bi-directional pathway from this uh, complicated stuff that's knowable but not familiar back into the complex, which is kind of the realm of the artist. And the realm of the artist might even be back into the chaotic, if you know what I mean. What, what I'm doing on my own is like creating my own uh, research project into like, basically it's like the importance of like creativity when you're, when you're in a group, especially when you want to bring a project uh, into like reality, you know, from like the idea stage into working it out until like now, now you got something, whether it's content or a working model or for your app or whatever, like the process of working in conjunction with, um, like I, uh, for my main contention is that within the process of working on a project, especially too, if you got people that care and you have someone that's creative, then your messaging, your artwork, your media all comes organically from from that. And and like I'm doing my proof of concept of like everything that I'm producing right now. Like I'm making these video edits that are collective. Um, the way I'm trying to write is collective and bringing in multiple people. And this is this is like what I believe later is like how you you see these. Uh, projects that that are more than just projects but they're also these ecosystems that could uh, tie up but it's like it starts from little seeds of ideas these little groups and then them somehow you know just being in touch with each other and, and sinking in in the larger context of like DAOs and then other DAOs yeah yeah okay <laughs> wait where did where did Shabnam go because I think we need to embed all the things we are talking about and obviously from creative flows and research those we are just putting into all the work we are doing so this would be like the embodiment of this and just trying to put things around how we are creating all this and programs for I kind of started to do that with the um, here I'll share really quickly if that's okay so on on the specific um, project pages, you can kind of start seeing here, for example, the regenerative workflow. You can kind of start seeing how they relate to each other. So for example, like Satori and Jean's um, DUP Imaginarium calls, it kind of informs the dynamic energy budget technical calls as well. And then from there, we're synthesizing like the, the prototype. And then for the library, the self-discovery game will be part of the library eventually. So it's kind of starting to connect. Uh, so this working group Omega Manifesto has many sides and of course it's mm, an attempt to give an, up, give an overview of how we started working. <laughs> Um, you know, what are the first principles that we, at least in the beginning, over one and a half years ago, uh, decided we can put together. And now that, uh, and again, Omega, uh, we decide here to explore this decentralized, decentralization and autonomy, maybe up to its limits, uh, meaning you know, we, we said it's not going to be another meeting, another work, uh, another session you have to just um, get into, but actually a place for people in the space who want to make sense of, of it all. And because Omega also focuses on token engineering ethos and ethics, um, it was just important to hold that space 
and not structure it, but see what emerges. This goes into what I, um, actually everybody from the energy uh, flow first mm -hmm. meetings not here, but um, that's kind of what we're doing in the energy flow just kind of initial research. It's about you know generally the philosophy of how energy uh, physics flow, but using that for your own self, like. Uh, you only have so much energy and time to dedicate to like what we're talking about right now mm -hmm. to your research and so uh, picking stuff that is low-hanging fruit that you're already kind of interested in and you're already mm -hmm. you know naturally um with my friend that i do the mandala research with is like i, mm -hmm. I said it that we we recognize that we had his own personal itch of like something that we uh, we've been yeah. doing like six years and then like when we lined up it was like oh we speak like at least in that aspect the same language <laughs> and we're like oh hell yeah okay and like we don't have to explain anything to each other we could just continue mm. on like talking mm. about like where we are in like this field of like kind of study like this weird kind of area of like robert <laughs> anton wilson and uh, douglas rushkoff and kind of where we are right now, like culturally and in the digital landscape of like Siberia or whatever. Um, so like, I find that like interesting in how we connected there, but in the same respect for the energy flow one is that we're kind of overlapping our studies. Um, you know, Jean proposed mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, you know, philosophy of this uh, uh, French philosopher. And I, I just find it interesting and I just started to read it and make notes. And it kind of lined up with something that I was already reading in my creative kind of like research for Imaginarium and we're doing like this like spoken word mixtape. Actually that came out of um, this reaction in this uh, steam hive community of uh, we had a poetry group and we noticed that like after sometimes we called it dead post and like something that we, we spent a lot of time and that we thought was really good like didn't get the attention that we wanted so then we started to do like these lists and then we called them the dead mm -hmm. posts and like and then we did our own dead posts like uh poems and i was like oh i'm gonna do the dead po spoken word poem like mixtape because i video edit so anybody like bring their old like recycled poems and we'll do it and that's all to say mm -hmm. that like all this is like connected to me because it's like these things that we do already, but then like we, when we team up with people, going to like this, mm -hmm. and so in that poetry group, we all write poetry naturally, right? But when we share it, we kind of like, especially in the open mic night, we had, we were competitive <laughs> in, a, in a good way. Like, I would always like bring a poem and someone would say something, I'm like, oh God, I gotta write a new poem. <laughs> and I would always like rip up the poem that I brought to the open mic and write a poem like, on the spot to like to on respond. the spot <laughs> yeah, to respond uh, back and so like that kind of like magic and i think you know even mm -hmm. how we're doing it in the threads like this asynchronous of like sharing our different things mm -hmm. and then when we have time and this is something i learned um working in imaginarium i actually did call this thread um the dead spoken uh poetics and in that one you could only talk in po poetry and so like over time like you I, I would tell my friend like I would have to like it was like at the end of the day or in the morning like make sure that I had time and space to give it my full attention you know like not being distracted by yeah. like pinging of mm. like, notifications but to actually like, read and to actually you know respond mm -hmm. in like you know the felt experience of whatever that person was uh, uh, sharing poetically and so like this became like this like practice that we did but I think to the to the extent of what we're talking about here of uh, finding what what we we could give um, our time and energy to that will um, refill us that gives us energy and so it doesn't feel like a draining task it, it feels energizing and you and you feel even more um, energized to keep on digging down that like rabbit hole and keep on like scratching on that thing and to, mm -hmm. to see where those, those connections lie and that's kind of what I feel my own personal like journey of the creative flow and the energy flow of this like overlapping of what we're doing. And real quickly to the energy creative flow, it's kind of like merging me, uh, Streamer D and Jolly kind of like working for like working together to do this kind of like 
mock or, or like prototype to the self-discovery consilience library which mm -hmm. will lead, lead to the self-discovery yeah. game 